get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran, and it's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have a gritty, amazing salesperson, business person, entrepreneur, CEO. Adam Witte is the founder and CEO of Advantage Media Group. What began in the spare bedroom of his home is now an international publishing company. Advantage has been named to the prestigious Inc. 500 5000 list of America's fastest growing private companies and the best places to work in South Carolina multiple years in a row. He's the author, practices what he preaches, so he, he's the author of five books. He's the chairman of a nonprofit youth entrepreneur, it's called Youth Entrepreneurship South Carolina, and he's chairman of Clemson Entrepreneurship Institute. Adam, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so you know, with any startup, I, I've always believed you know, you're evaluating the jockey, not the horse. Mm-hmm. So if somebody said, hey, will you invest in my business? I'm probably more concerned about the CEO or the entrepreneur that I'm investing in than the actual business. Yeah, what do you look for? Yeah. Um, so, so here's what I look for. Uh, I look for confidence, not arrogance, confidence. There's a big difference and, and there's a line. But, but I, I look for confidence and belief, which, which is kind of what we were talking about you know, before. Um, I look for somebody that sees the big picture and really has a 500 foot view more than a five inch view, right? Because if if you're going to build a big company, if you're going to build a really big and great company, you've got to be able to see the big picture and how what you can do is, you know, life changing, world changing, industry changing, what have you. Yeah. I mean, I've always believed, like, why start a small business when you can start a really big business? Right. Right? I mean, that's a whole lot more fun to me. So I'm looking for people that that think big and and see the big picture. Um, I'm looking for somebody that knows how to sell. And that that doesn't mean that they're, like, trained in how to be an ace salesman. But it means that they can articulate how they have a company that can solve other people's problems. And, and how it's a true solution, you know, in the world, in the marketplace. So I, I'm looking at that. And then I think also, you know, just a final thing is, is I, in, I invest in and I look for entrepreneurs that are logical, not emotional. They're logical, but also they're thick skinned, meaning, you know what, they, they can take a lick and they can get right back up. Right. They have, and, and that goes back to the grittiness, um, but it, it's it's really resiliency and the ability to persevere. Yeah. Because I'm telling you what, starting a business from scratch, it ain't easy. It right. ain't easy one bit. Yeah. And if you think it's a walk in the park, and if you think that everything's going to be served to you on a silver platter, you couldn't be any more wrong. Right. And so the ability to take the lick and keep on trucking, keep on ticking, keep on walking. Boy, I mean, yeah. that that's important. Yeah. Super important. So Adam, I have one last question if we have time for it. Um, yep. But I want to point people towards where they should check you out. I know um, advantagefamily.com. That's right. That's the, the website people can check out. Any other places on the web? I know you mentioned forbesbooks.com. Where else should we point people towards to, to check out what you have going on? You can check out adamwitty.com as well. Adam Witty, yeah. W-I-T-T-Y. That's right. Yeah. Like smart, clever, and funny. Exactly. <laughs> um, 
So check those out, advantagefamily.com, forbesbooks.com, adamwitty.com. My last question is, I want you to just briefly run through, you can do it quickly, the evolution of your offices. Because you started off in your bedroom and now you're in, I think, like a 10,000 square foot facility, yep. right? Yep. Take me through the journey. I mean, you don't have to go into detail, but you start off in your spare bedroom. In your spare bedroom. What were the some of the offices yep. along the way? So we went from a bedroom, yep. which I don't know, was maybe 100 square feet, um, to a 1,200 square foot office that could probably comfortably fit, I don't know, five or six people. And then we went to about... 1800 square feet and then we went to about 2600 square feet and then we kind of maxed out at like 2800 square feet in in the office building we were in yeah. like we had just kept eating up all the little offices next right. to ours right. and turned into one office and we were busting at the seams and then we uh moved to the, the office where we are now yeah which it's a two-story building. Because oh, it's a huge it's, jump, right? Yeah, huge jump. Yeah. I mean, we're going from 2,800 square feet to 5,000 square feet. So we basically doubled. And <clears throat> the building that we're in, two stories, we took the first floor knowing that we would have the ability to grow into the second floor when we were ready. Right. And so um, we took our time, and that took a couple more years to fully – <clears throat> fill out, if you will, the 5,000 square feet. Yeah. Then we took over the next 5,000 square feet. Uh, and then we also have an office in Austin, Texas, which oh, wow. is 5,000 square feet. Wow. So yeah. is that people, pro books, or both? So it's largely marketing. Um, we have a uh, marketing agency business yeah. and our publishing business. And the hub of our uh, marketing business is based in Austin, Texas. Got it which was a strategic acquisition that we made. Wow. Adam, congratulations with everything. Um, I really appreciate your time. This is always fantastic to hear your stories. Go ahead, are you gonna say something? Yeah, I was gonna say one more thing about the office space. Yeah. Uh, so I've always believed that, you know, people are your greatest asset in building a company. Yeah. I don't care what industry you're in, uh, you will have to have people if you wanna build a real, business, meaning a big business. I mean, if you want to build a business that's a $20 million company, a $50 million company, $100 million company, a billion dollar company, one thing that all these bigger companies have in common is they need great people to power those businesses. Yeah. And so when it comes to the physical environment, you know, the physical office that your people are in, I've always been a big believer in investing money and making the office really first class. Yeah. And that is, it's inviting, it's vibrant, lots of colors. Like if you come to our office, there's, you know, quotes all around the office. There's book covers all over the office, copies of Forbes magazine, you know, motivational posters and signs and, you know, all kinds of advantage branded stuff. My goal is to make our office look like Disneyland. Right. And if every wall isn't covered, then I still have work to do. <laughs> um, and, and so I would just say to entrepreneurs that are growing, that are hiring people, it's your job to make the place that they come to work fun, exciting, yeah. and vibrant. Yeah. It, it's your job. It's not their job. It's your job to do that. Um, one of our core values is create an environment that breeds greatness. And I think that if entrepreneurs can successfully create an environment in their business that breeds greatness, then yeah. that the business will grow and the business will prosper. Yeah. See, when you keep talking, it makes me want to ask more questions. So I'm just going to cut myself off. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it, it is true. And I want to know what, what do your staff say is most fun? Or what's <laughs> come out of conversations because you obviously focus in on this and that is a priority i mean you were voted one of the best places to work um so that's a that's a huge core value for you what's what's something that maybe someone else could implement into their office that your staff has said is fun or, or came out of some kind of meeting 
Yep. So we have something, our big, hairy, audacious goal is called the road to a thousand, which is publishing a thousand books per year, mm -hmm. uh, by December 31st of 2018. Um, we have something called the pub to a thousand mm -hmm. and we have a bar in our office. You just take a thousand shots. No, I'm just kidding. Not a thousand shots. <laughs> okay. Um, but the pub to a thousand is open every Friday afternoon from four thirty to five thirty. Okay. And we do a company wide huddle uh, at four twenty three p.m. Eastern time, and the team in Austin joins us, and they have a bar in Austin as well. And we do a quick seven minute kind of, you know, really like it's a like stand a pep up rally. type of thing. It's a stand up. Yeah. It's a quick pep rally, reviewing all the accomplishments as a team we've achieved in the past week. Hmm. And then the pubs open for an hour for people to get a beer and catch up and just, you know, talk to their friends. Right. Um, that's a small thing. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. For but, sure. I, but, but I think it's a difference maker. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, recognizing people, we do something called caught in the act of greatness. Yeah. And every Friday afternoon, people fill out their caught in the act of greatness cards and recognize each other for doing great work yeah. because you know we have 52 people in our company there's a lot of good stuff that i never see yeah and so if you're counting on me to call it out it's never going to happen because right. i just never see it right so we we really need to kind of call out each other and recognize each other so, so that's a small thing that we yeah. do yeah um, so all these little things, you know, creating the culture is so important. I, you know, I've always believed, and, and one of our authors, he, he famously says, he says, when I walk into a company, I can smell the culture hmm. immediately. And he says, culture is either by design or it's by default. Yeah, yeah. And, and he said, if you want to build a great business, you have to be intentional and design the culture exactly as you want it. Yeah. You can't just leave it up to someone to create or organically for it to just bubble up. Right. If you let that happen, it's probably going to be a culture that you may not want. Yeah. Adam, thank you. I want to be the first one to thank you. Everyone should check out all the sites I list, you know, I mentioned before, advantagefamily.com. Thanks for taking the time even though you've launched a huge deal with Forbes uh, in the in the past few days, so I really appreciate it. Jeremy, real pleasure. So awesome to be with you, and thanks so much for the inspiration that you give to entrepreneurs week in and week out. Yeah, thanks, Adam. I really appreciate it, and good luck with the buying the NBA team. So anyone that knows out there that can help Adam with that, let him know. <laughs> what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See, life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand 